Sizzly Hour from Cyber Beauty by Sizzly. The reason why I'm doing this video today is because I had a request from a very close friend and she's also a YouTuber. Her name is Nancy B. She's a vlogger. I will link her channel down below. It's very informative and funny. She sometimes dabbles in a lot of little things. I love it that she tries to do her makeup and I, I always give everybody props that is out there to try to do something new. But she called me and she said that she was a clueless person when it came to actually knowing how to do her foundation. And I wanted to do a, a foundation tutorial that shows how to put on your foundation, um, the base of your face um, properly. So this is the video. I'm going to go step by step. I'm also using all drugstore because she said, hey girl, I don't have tons and tons of money to buy high-end stuff. I totally get you, girl. I got you covered. Because even if it's not high-end, I'm sorry, I'm just putting stuff away. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not good. So lately, the drugstore has been upping their game and they've been really bringing it. So I'm also going to try a new foundation that I haven't tried and show you guys how I do my face. But I forgot to do one more thing. I need to uh, wet my Real Techniques complexion sponge. Um, it comes in something like this. Um, Real Techniques Your Base Flawless Miracle Complexion Sponge. Um, and they're very inexpensive in the drugstore. So I'll be right back. <clears throat> I'm back. Alrighty. Okay. So... I'm going to give you guys some good tips and how to do your foundation and I'm going to give you guys good tricks. Um, it also depends on how, how much coverage you want. Um, and I'm going to say this to the grain of salt without trying not to offend any YouTuber or any girl that does this is some people like to put it on and it's okay but you have to know how to blend it. So it looks right. So another thing that I wanted to do, um, I'll do it in another video, I won't do it in this video, um, is show people what they've done, what they're doing, and how it should be done, so they can see the difference of what I'm looking at when I see them. Um, and that's for another person that requested that. So she's like, I don't see what you're talking about. So I'm going to show her what she does, and then I'm going to show her what I would do, and they'll see, you'll see a big difference. So, it's more like a what not to do and what to do, but that's in another video. So, today is about foundation. Okay, so first things first, you have to prime your face. Just like when you're about to paint a wall, you have to prime the wall before you paint it. Your face is your canvas, so you have to prime it. Now, primer usually has uh, an ingredient with glycerin, so the foundation stays. This is the best kept secret in the whole entire makeup industry. Nikki Tutorials, I think, introduced it to YouTube or made it a big fad, you know, like a big uh, new trend. That's the word. And it's the Nivea Men Post Shaving Balm Insensitive. And no drying alcohol. This is, I think, the best primer ever. I have an expensive primer from Giorgio Armani and I've tested it. I've done half Giorgio Armani, half Nivea and it does the same effect. Like it's the same thing. So I'm like why am I going to pay $55 for this primer when I could pay $3 at CVS for the Nivea Plus Shave Balm. And my son shaves so he uses it too. It smells like men. But guess what? It's okay. Alright, now, this is to basically keep the foundation stuck. Now, it is very liquidy, so you have to keep rubbing it until it gets, like, kind of sticky. It doesn't feel sticky on your face, but it feels sticky on your fingers. My hands are clean. And it's almost getting there. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yes, my eyes... Are halfway done <laughs> because I usually don't finish my eyes until my face is done and then I do the bottom part okay so then I also have a lot of pores 
Give me a second. So if you have pores, there is a smoothing primer that you put on to cover all your little holes in your face. You can't really tell. I'm going to zoom in. Um, see, like, my craters are huge. And if I didn't zoom in, you can't see them. And I have them everywhere. And I exfoliate every night. And they just don't go away. So... Sorry. <laughs> um, I use this to fill it out. I should have just kept it zoomed in so you can see, but I'll just go closer to the camera. And what I like about the next one is first, it's very inexpensive. It reminds me so much of the Smashbox and the Makeup Forever smoothing primer. So. The, the pharmacy understands, like, oh my god, we're losing business because we don't have any of the stuff that the high end does. So they're coming out with their own. Now, Navia does have a primer for women, but it's so small and it doesn't do the same. I think this is, like, the best kept secret. And it has 3.3 .3 ounces worth of products. So it's like a dollar an ounce. Because this is like 375 in the drugstore. store. Okay, and then the pore filler. This is like a little sample one that came in my travel kit, but it's usually a bigger one. Okay, so then all my holes are covered. I think. Just put it right down on my face. There we go. I'm really pushing in the product so the craters that I have go away. <laughs> okay, so now I'm like I said, I was gonna do like a first impression type of thing because I haven't used it. The Lumi Cushion Foundation. This thing has been raved on YouTube by a bunch of YouTubers. My favorite being Jacqueline Hill. Hey girl, if you're watching, thank you. Now to get it open. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay. Oh. All right, and it comes with its own applicator. I don't like using these because eventually they'll start getting bacteria because of a lot of people don't usually clean them. So I will use my Real Technique sponge, and it comes in. Look at that. So it came with this. So this is like a sanitation thing, and it says peel, uh, close tightly after use. And then I get my real techniques. You wet it. You run it under a spot of water and take out the axis. Get a paper towel, and it has to be damp, not dry. And then you get the the real techniques and put in the product, and then go in. Now this is supposed to. Now the reason why I'm using this foundation, again, it's about what you guys want to do. But I like to be very like glowy. I'm Latin. And as I got older, my skin has changed a lot. Hormones, weight, all that junk. Oh, this foundation is actually a really good match. That would be too light. No, it's beautiful. Especially now that it's winter. And I'm not that tan. And the color is C5.5. Okay. I'm going to have to get me a 6 for summer. But this is a really good foundation. And look, and it's like very dewy. It's very full coverage. And everything. Now, depending on what you're going to do, like some people want to do like a quick thing. You can just do this and fine, but some people have like, when you get older, you have bags under your eyes. People say I don't have bags. They're there, people. They're there. Okay. So I get a correcting concealer. So I use this one. The Maybelline Age Rewind um, Correcting Concealer. This is good. Um, this is a little light for me, but it's a brightening one, and it, it's a pink salmon, like salmon color, 
which really will like take out the darkness, counteract darkness. So I usually go under my eye like this. I pat, I don't swipe. Because, so I'll stop. And I also use it for highlighting. As you can see, it's really bright. So, you can do whatever. So this is just to correct it, and then I did that to balance the, the foundation. Okay. So see, it like it's covering the circles, as well as highlighting. And yes, I like me my Chloe, Kim Kardashian look. So that's what I'm doing. And I use the pointed part of the Real Techniques brush because it gets in there. And I'm patting people. I'm not swiping. I'm patting in very fast motion because that's how I am. <laughs> okay. And see, it's balanced. It doesn't look too bright or too anything. I was going to do another concealer, but this did the trick. Now for our, my friend, she's dark, so she has really dark circles, so you would use the one that's more suited for your skin color, uh, probably like a medium or a dark, or a light, medium to dark instead of dark dark, and you would go under it. Now to make sure it's completely gone, it has to be a correcting concealer, so it has to balance out, so usually like reds uh, take out the blues or the black underneath your eyes. And then the yellows is to brighten. So this is a brightening, correcting concealer. So it did both. It did correcting and it highlighted my face. But if it didn't, if it just corrected it, it would look very uh, orangey. And then I wanted to balance it with another concealer. And I'll just... Should I show you? I'm going to show you. And then you go in to highlight it. And the upside down triangle. And if you hear my son going crazy, he's playing video games out there. <laughs> Alright, so then I pat this. And do the same motion. You see how it's more brighter now? Now, I think doing this, it makes you look awake. It makes you look refreshed. It makes you look awesome. Now, this by no means is a little bit of makeup. This is a lot of makeup. But at the same time, you're blending it. And the reason why I use this uh, type of format instead of a brush, um, if you put too much product because it's wet, it will soak up the necessary product to make your face look dewy, not caked on, and stuff like that, okay? So now that I'm completely blended, because I do have some little wrinkles that people can't see. People think I don't have any wrinkles. I do, I have a little bit, I do. I get my air, yeah, air spun loose face translucent powder. This is translucent, meaning it has no color to it. So it doesn't matter if you're black, white, it, it should do the trick to hold your stuff in. Now, if you're going to continue doing creams, like a cream contour, then you wait to do all your creams first and then do your powders. But I don't think I'm going to do a harsh contour cream because I don't think I have... Yeah, I just ran out of my, con my dark concealer. To do the do the cream contour, and since I told her I was gonna do all the uh, drugstore, I'll just do the powder. Okay, so this comes with the loofah or like a puffing pad. So then I like to use again my real techniques, and I use the top of the thing to put in my powder. Now again, people, a little goes a long way. People think they have to put a bunch of it on. Now, if you're going for full coverage, maybe. Oh my God, what did I do? 
There we go. Okay, so that's a little much, but you get it and it's wet. And what we're gonna do is called baking. So in the event that your highlight isn't highlighted, sometimes doing this will cause the area to highlight more. As you can tell right now, I look like a ghost under there. Okay. Now another powder that Kathleen Light, one of the YouTubers I follow. I'll explain why I'm doing this in a minute. It's called RCM RCMA. It's good for a makeup artist, but it's a really good no color powder. See this kind of has a little bit of a tint to it. But it's just to highlight a little. The other one has no color. Like you do this and you wipe it, it will break, make it brighter, but there's no color. Like it's not white, it's not yellow. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? So the reason why I did this, so when I do my contour, it looks clean. Now I do it first because if I for whatever reason there's I can I can tell where to stop my contour instead of going too low or too high. And then after I do it, if I see that I overdid it, I go back and clean it up again. Okay? Alright, so that is the face. Now I'm going to contour. So I'm going to use the NYX contour palette. This I found at Ulta right now. Like they're having like the NYX buy one get half off. And what's this? I bought the travel pack, which was 19 I got this for eight dollars. So again, you just find your nearest drugstore, and you can find really good deals. So I'm getting my Morphe E48. These are very inexpensive brushes, and they're really good. Um, and I'm gonna use uh, the two, well, the two shades right here, and I blend them because I'm in between. So I want a little bit of color, but not too much. So I'll go a little bit dark, a little bit light, and just go back and forth. And then, of course, tap my exit. See how much powder that came off? And so whatever's on the brush stays on the brush. And then I go on the hollows of my cheeks. And the reason why I'm doing this is so you can cause a shadow effect so it makes your face look thinner. And that's why people contour nowadays. It's plastic surgery at its best, people. See, like, I already have a natural shadow with all the baking, but I'm going to deepen it because I'm going to buff all this out. And when I buff it out, it's not going to be there anymore. So you're going to need those shadows. Okay. See? That crazy, crazy contour. Now some people bronze first and then contour, some people contour first then bronze. It doesn't need to be in any specific order. Um, so do your blush first and then you contour, then you like all over the place. Some people do it because they do blush and they're going to be harsh and then when they do their contour and blushing, they're blending it out, which is fine people, I don't care. Alright, so I'm going to get my E3 brush, it's a little pointed brush. Uh, do I want my E3? Or do I want to do something else? Give me a second, people. I'm trying to do the bronzing effect. Oh, never mind. I'm going to do it my M527. I thought this was dirty. and Or it was trying to dry. Cause I clean my brushes all the time, people. Okay, so I'm going to get my Eye Man bronzer in Earth is Dark. Look at that beautiful warm. It reminds me of Too Faced Dark Chocolate. So this was like five dollars in the drugstore. Very little goes a long way. And the reason why I use this brush, this is white hair, goat hair, like um, real hair brush. So it spreads the product, but it doesn't put too much on. Okay. So now I'm gonna go in and warm up the face. Now by warm up the face, meaning like since I have all this highlight, I'm trying to make it look a little bit more tan. 
and then it's I'm going towards the areas of my contour but not right on it right on top and I go in circular motions buffing it upward so it looks like I got a facelift okay and then I go on the top of my forehead into the hairline so my hair my when you look at my hair it's not like white and then dark and the reason why I do that is I have a small forehead so I really don't need to be contouring up here but I do it to balance the face okay again going on top of the contour warming up the face going upward and that gives you like a beautiful bronzy look okay see it looks really nice okay then I go in with my blush I'm gonna go in with elf blush palette in dark it looks like this I always have trouble opening packages don't mind me going not stop so that's what it looks like so I'm gonna get with the light color. Actually, I'm gonna go here because I don't want to be look too much. But these are these are very pigmented, and one of the things I noticed is that this. Sorry, I don't want to blind you. These are very pigmented, but sometimes hard to blend, especially since I have dry skin. So you want to go very lightly and like at, tap out the excess, and you want to go right above the bronze and towards the back to give you a little bit of color. Very nice. Now I don't put it here because I already have chubby cheekies as you can see. So I'm just making it look more blendable towards my bronze and contour. I don't want my cheeks to stand out pretty much. Even though I have very hollow. Yeah. They're right there. I go back there. So it gives me color, it gives me feels like I'm like rosy, like ah! Okay. very little goes a long way people don't put on that much product I always tap up the exit and in case you did too harsh all you have to do is blend people just keep doing this until you get the color you want if you did too much you know so this is like what are you doing with the same brush the product is off the brush people no see like you don't see anything going on my hand everything is on your face so you're blending the harshness you're taking off all of that excess harshness and it blends out beautifully. I think if, even if you mess up with your contour, you can always blend. So now I'm going to get the E3 brush and wipe off all that excess powder I put in the beginning. As you can see, all the powder coming off. So I'm wiping off all that bake. So if I would have messed up there, I would have gone in back with the powder and cleaned it up see I still have some on my techniques I have to go in more but I'm okay now so if I needed to clean it because if this was like a ragged chisel or whatever you clean it up okay so then I always like to beam like I'm coming from the stars so that's when I highlight the face now I usually get my back up, but like I promised my friend. Oh, drugstore! So, the next palette, sorry, I'm blowing in my palette. Do not do that if you're doing it on somebody else. Uh, this is a pretty highlight. It reminds me of Becca Pearl or Moonstone. And very little goes a long way, people. See? Whoa! But. It gives me the highlight I want. I want to beam from the heavens so the Lord can see me. You know? I think of it as the flashlight. Say, hey, God, I'm right here. Look at me. I glow from the dark. And then I like to highlight everywhere. So you don't have to highlight anywhere. When you highlight, you're highlighting things that you want people to notice. So I love my nose. I love my chickens. You know, I want to look like I'm radiant and happy. So sometimes putting a lot of glow makes you look like you're like, hi. And I do this because it, it accentuates your lip. 
So it makes it look poutier when you do your lips. You'll see when I do my lips. Okay. So that's that. Okay. So I did my contour, my blush, pretty much everything on my face. So now the bottom of my eyes are naked. Why do I wait till the end? Because if I did my eyes in the bottom and then I did all that concealer, sometimes it, cle it cleans everything underneath the eye. So you want to go in afterwards. That's my take and my opinion. Um, where's the palette? I don't see what I'm saying. I was using the L'Oreal Nude Palette. I did a little bit of ColourPop color shade into here too. And I did... Okay, so I use... Um, I use this color for transition, this for my brow bone, this for the bottom, the top transition, uh, like to warm it up, and then this dark bad boy. Where, why does it look different? Yeah, so this in my inner corner with a little bit of color pop so you could bling a little bit. And this for my crease shade. And then I got uh, the ColourPop Black Swerve Gel Liner. And I used my E65 from Sigma. These are like the sample brushes they give you when you buy stuff. Um, a good one from Morphe is the M160 116th. This is a really good eyeliner brush too if you're going to use gel. So people like liners, like liquid liners. NYX has amazing liquid liners. Okay, so my favorite black eyeliners from the drugstore are NYX. There's another one that just came out. It's like a French name. It's really glidey, but this one's really pigmented. Then there's L'Oreal Silky... Silky Smith... Silky Smith... And this is very glidey, but this is more like a gunmetal color instead of a black. And then if you really want a really good smoldering black that you can blend out, it's the L'Oreal Voluminous Smolder Eyeliner in black. This comes in black and brown, and I believe gray. So, but I'm going to use NYX. So it's pretty much just like, oh, NYX anyways. Okay. Now, you don't have to do this, but I don't like to touch my under eye because it creases from the, all the oils. And push down and do your waterline. Okay, there you go. See, it was very glad, very, very pigmented. Didn't have to go in too much. Now, one of the other questions that my friend also asked me, and I know that a bunch of people are going to ask me the same question, might as well bring it up, is sometimes they do this and it irritates their eyes. One thing is it can have um, carbon or charcoal in it, and that can irritate your eyes very much. Another thing is that the pencil is dry. So one thing I like to do, mine was already sharpened because I already used it, is to sharpen the pencil to smooth out the liner. If that still doesn't work, okay, one trick in the book I have is, people are like, what? A lighter melts the pencil, so it takes off all the harshness. See how it's melted away? And now watch, I'm not going to do it in my eye. But look. It glides on. Look how black that is. It's literally so smooth. It glides on. Oh, too hard there. There. Very pigmented. Very glidey. So if you think it's too dry and it's it's hurting you, shape, uh, sharpen it. And if it's already sharpened, you already did the sharpening. It's still not working. Then the pencil is dry. It needs to be moist. Sometimes heating it up will work. Okay. So now I get my flat definer brush in Morphe M432 anything that's flat people and then I go in with this dark beautiful color and then I place the product right underneath my lashes and then becoming a full face tutorial huh people sorry but I just want to finish my eyes I think she did bring up the eyeliner thing, might as well. Okay. Now, I get a pencil brush, and the best one I love is my E36 from Morphe. Look how tiny this thing is. Look at it. 
is the perfect pencil brush. It is. It's beautiful. And then I smudge out everything to smoke it out. No product in the pencil, I just smudge out what I have. So it's like blending your eyes. Now, a lot of people also ask, but this takes so long. If you want to look like this, and it takes a while for you because you've never done it before, play with your play with it. The more you repeat the same look and the same everything, it becomes faster, it becomes repetition, it becomes a routine. So, you have to take care of yourselves. Notice my liner is gone. Excuse me, people. So I'm getting the ColourPop Swerve Black Gel. Sorry, because I noticed that this is almost gone. It doesn't happen. I must have lost it. Oh, I think I was cleaning it up and I lost it, but I forgot to go back in. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Alright, so lips. Might as well finish the look, right? It doesn't look all dead. Um, I might switch you guys in another video, the Revlon. This is not in burgundy, it was in blackberry. So I line my lips with this and then go in with the nude. I overdraw my lips. Why do you overdraw your lips? If you do not want to get lip fillers, by overdrawing your lips, it makes them look poutier. Some people also have like the lip suctions that you like put your lips in there and it makes your lips very pouty. Do not do that Kylie Jenner challenge where you put your mouth in a bottle because you can hurt yourself. Take long with my lips, people. All right. Now, I only overdraw my upper lip, not my bottom lip because my bottom lip is already pouty. Now why do I do this? Because I want to do the ombre effect. Where uh, I'm making the illusion of my this part looking pouty. And the reason why I do that is so it looks, you're making the contour of your lips to make them look poutier. See how we contour our face to make it look chiseled? Our lips are going to look pouty now. Why not? Remember, makeup is makeup. If you don't like it, you take it off. And if you love it, you leave it on. Look at that. Alrighty, people. So that's done. I think a little bit too. There you go. Alright, people. That is my foundation class, if you may. Routine. Um, and also, I'm doing the first impression on the Lumi foundation. Um, so, I will let you know in another video how this goes. I like I don't know how to do the updates yet because I'm learning how to do editing and stuff and like to record and add and all that stuff. So please be patient with me and my channel. I am new to all this and learning how to uh, record and well not learning how to record because you just hit the record button. But uh, learning how to edit it and post it on YouTube. So be patient with me. And um, I hope you enjoyed this little educational video. I hope the girls that are watching are learning, the, especially my friend Nancy B Vlog TV. Her link is down below if you want to watch her channel. And this is what I this is what I always do with all my foundations, um, high end or low end. I still use this for both because it's a really good primer. Um, and I really hope you enjoy these videos that I take my hard-earned time to do because I really like to teach. I really like to play with my makeup. So why not combine them both? And 
I also have another channel go, uh, starting to launch. Not, I haven't done anything there yet. I have posted some birth videos because I am a midwife. So I'm also going to be doing educational videos there too for that purpose. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, tweet me. My handle is Sizzly Hour, S-I-Z-Z-L-Y-A-U-E-R. It's all down below. Snapchat is Childbirth Option. I stopped with the O. Um, everything I'll link down below too. Uh, Facebook, I have Cyber Beauty by Sizzly. And let me see what else. Instagram, it's Sizzly Hour. And I hope you've been enjoying all these tutorials I've been putting up. And I can't wait to see you next in my next video. Bye.